Welcome to this new video. We will continue with the transient response of first order circuits. This is our example 7. We have a RC circuit with a dependent source, including we have two resistors R1, R2, one capacitor, one independent voltage source VM, and there is a current controlled voltage source, which you can see here is two times I1. So the value of this voltage source depends on the current flowing through the resistor R1. The values are given on the right, in blue, and the question is, as we did in the previous examples, the capacitor voltage as a function of time that is required, and also the current through the capacitor as a function of time for time greater than zero. So let's start with the procedure. Of course, you know from the uh, previous examples, to determine the voltage across the capacitor and also the current across the capacitor, we use the standard formula for the first order circuits so that will be also used in this in this example so let's start with the situation for time less than zero we'll look at the situation when the switch is still open so there is no change in the circuit and we assume that the circuit is running for a long 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 time so there is a steady state situation so in that case we can determine for this part we can determine the initial value of the capacitor voltage so since this is open there is no current flowing to this branch we can assume that the circuit is, uh, is is this section so there is a vm in series with the r2 r1 r1 r2 and the capacitor c so the, uh, so the circuit will be redrawing like this and the capacitor will be an open circuit for steady state that's actually what we have discussed in the previous examples so we have R1 and R2 in series, and there is a capacitor which is actually modeled as an open circuit. So that's actually what we have here. So this voltage is the initial voltage of the capacitor. So what we have is, since there is no current flowing through the capacitor, also there is no current flowing to the resistors R1 and R2, there is no voltage drop across these resistors, so that means there is only voltage across the capacitor, which is ex exactly equal to Vm. So we can already say V, V capacitor initially is equal to Vm, which is 12 volts. So that's actually the situation for time less than zero. So let's look now for the situation for time greater than zero so the switch will be closed and there is a change in the circuit and we will look at the situation again when the circuit is running for a long 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 time so there is a, again a steady state situation and for this part we will calculate the final value or the steady state value of the capacitor voltage so let's redraw again the circuit and make the capacitor again open since there is a steady state situation so the Vm we have here, and there is a voltage uh, uh, resistor R1, and we have a dependent source two times I1, and there is a resistor R1, R2, and there is a capacitor which is modeled as an open circuit. So I will denote this as we see infinity that means that this means that the steady state value of the capacitor is is given okay so how will you calculate uh, the voltages for the steady state situation so we can do this in different ways i will make this point x so maybe you can use it in the further calculation this is the current flowing through the resistor R1 so let's make this also uh, clear so what we can do is we can make a loop here for uh, as a Kirchhoff current uh, voltage law so we can make a voltage loop and we can determine actually what the situation is for the current in this case so let's do that so the first equation we can uh, develop is the Vm is equal to the R1 times the I1 plus 2 times I1. So in this case everything is uh, known except the I1 and I1 in this case is of course the I1 for 
uh, the steady state situation. So actually, what you can do is you can uh, place it between the parentheses infinity sign here. So actually, just fill in the given value. So we have 12 is equal to 6 times i1 plus 2 times i1, and it will be 12 is equal to 8 times i1, and i1 will be here. 12 divided by 8, and it will be 3 divided by 2, so 1.5 amperes. So this is actually the current for the uh, resistor R1 for steady state situation. So since we know the current through the re resistor R1, we also know the voltage, voltage for this dependent. So this is actually two times that. And we also know the voltage at point X. But since point X is also the re uh, voltage across the capacitor in its open circuit model, since we know that, we can also uh, calculate the capacitor voltage for the steady state situation. So what we can write here is the V capacitor for the steady state situation is actually the Vx at steady state. So and Vx at steady state is actually two times the I1 at steady state. And this is, this is actually this value is actually for I1 at steady state. So let's uh, fill in the values. So what we have is Vx at steady state is 2 times 3 divided by 2. That will be 3 volts. So the value for the Vc at steady state will be also 3 volts since these are equal. So this, these are the initial and the steady state value. So I will make this also clear. This is the initial value, initial value, and this is the steady state value. Okay, so what is the next part? The next part is as we did also in the previous examples, we would like to know the time constant of the circuit after the switching. So what we'd like to know is this circuit we will use and again we will uh, turn off all independent uh, sources or so the uh, voltage source independent voltage of Vm will be a short circuit and we will look between the two terminals of the capacitor and we'll see what kind of resistor we are measuring we are seeing. So I will again redraw the circuit to make the situation clear. So let's do this time constant. So that's actually the last part of the formula. Okay, time constant, you know, for the time constant, we need tau, and that's actually the Tiffany resistance for the RC circuits times the capacitor value C. So if you know the Tiffany resistance, you're done with your time constant. Okay, let's re redraw the circuit. What we have is, of course, the Vm will be a short circuit, so I will make it clear like this. There is a R1. The, in the dependent source will be still there, so that will be not shorted because it is dependent, it is not independent. So there is a resistor R1 still there, R2 still there. And we have the connections which are left open for the capacitor. So what we do always, we place a test voltage and we will determine the resulting test current. That's actually what we always did. And I will make this point again X and I will make clear that the current is flowing in this direction. Okay, what we can do is we can uh, easily determine the required values to go actually uh, for the Tevenin resistance. So what is actually the Tevenin resistance? So like, let me make this also clear. When you look between the terminals of the capacitor, these two terminals is actually the same as calculating the ratio V test divided by I test. So the Tevenin resistance is this and the Tevenin resistance is equal to V test divided by I test. So if you know that, then you're done, actually. That's actually the ratio. So let's 
look at it. Uh, for, I will use the left circuit and I will make a water loop there. So what we have is I will make a KVL at the, at the left side. So I will make two times the I1, that's actually the voltage, is equal to minus R1 times I1. That's actually the voltage loop uh, at the left side. So if you fill in the given values, 2 times I1 is equal to minus 6 times I1, and that will be 8 times I1 will be 0. And this will bring us to I1 is 0 amps. Okay, that is really interesting. If this is 0, if this is a, a 0 amps, there will be also that this is 0 volts. And if this is 0 volts, that the, this means that in modal, and, and modeling the, this part will be a short circuit. So the, this part will be from point X to the ground, will be a short circuit. If this is a short circuit, then the resistance also is short circuited. So actually what we see is only R2. So this is a really simple situation. So then we can say R Thevenin is equal to R2. So actually this uh, expression is not really required here because this was very simple the, since this is short circuited and since R2 is 3 so we know also the R Thevenin so then this is done so what we have is for a tau is equal to 3 times and the capacitor value was given 0 0.005 so 5 millifarads so what we get is 0 0.015 seconds so it's actually 15 milliseconds so that's actually for the last part so what we do is we will look at the uh, formula for calculating the voltage across the capacitor so the standard formula i will uh, make this i will draw it again i will uh, denote this vc is equal to vc at infinity so this is actually the final value plus the initial value vc initial minus vc at steady state times e to the power t divided by tau so let's fill in what we have calculated vc at infinity it was let, uh, let's check again to make sure that was 3 and the initial value was 12 so we will use this. So what we get is 3 plus and then 12 minus 3 e to the power minus t divided by 0 0.015. So if you simplify this a little bit, you get 3 plus 9 e to the power minus 66. 67 approximated t and this will be in volts so this is actually the expression for the voltage across the capacitor so the next part is the uh, current through the capacitor so that's actually not really uh, difficult since we know the formula the current through the capacitor is c times the derivative of the voltage across the capacitor it will be this so what we can do is we can fill in the given values. The C was 0 0.005. And I will take the derivative of the expression we have determined for the voltage across the capacitor. So the 3 plus 9 times e to the power minus 66.67 T. So if you do this, you will get 0 0.005. And then you get... 9 times minus 66.67 that will be if you do that uh, exactly you will get minus 600 times e to the power minus 66.67 t and if you again simplify this you will get exactly minus 3 times e to the power minus 66.67 T and it will be in amps. So I will write it down. This is all capacitor. 
current. Okay, so that's actually the situation. Let's read. Let's make a sketch of this so uh, we can see what's happening in a graphical uh, form. So if I make this the y-axis and this is our time axis, this is our time. So I have here the VC as a function of time in volts, and I also have the current as a function of time, and then in in amps. Okay, so let me uh, draw the situation for the voltage in blue. So what we get is we start at 12 and we will go, since we are, we are if you fill in here 0, then you have 3 plus 9, so you start at 12 volts, so that's actually correct, so that's the initial value. And if you move on and you wait uh, for a long, long time, the second part will be 0, so you're actually leveling off at Three volts. So what you get is you will be here. That means depending on the time constant, the speed will be like this. I will make a bed drawing of this. So it will be okay. So that will be like this. This is actually for the voltage across the capacitor. So let me do the current through the capacitor as, as in red. So I, it will start at minus 3, minus 3 amps. And I will grow to 0 since uh, if the time goes to infinity, this part will be 0. So it, you will level off at 0. So you will get a situation like this. So this was the voltage and this is the current and it will give you a nice uh, overview and a graphical form for what happens with the current through the capacitor and the voltage through the capacitor which C is initially at time zero so I may make this clear time zero and this is also zero so at time zero actually you get 12 volts across the capacitor and minus 3 amps through the capacitor at, uh, at just time 0 and then you have a, a growing uh, current which is leveling off to 0 and well, this will level off to 3 volts that's actually the situation for this part and sketch so it will be uh, of course we will dive in, in more detail about uh, this situation so uh, keep in touch and I hope this is uh, helpful for you and if you have any comments or questions, please leave it in the comment section. I will uh, check them. And uh, see you next time. And don't, don't forget to like and to share. Good luck.